Ladies and gentlemen, NBA free agency, day three. It's here. Damian Lillard, not traded. James Harden, not traded. What's going on? I don't know. Twitter, what are you doing? I'm not so sure. I can't see tweets, but I have seen overreactions. And that's the entire point of the stuff I'm talking about today. Some of the biggest overreactions I've seen so far throughout NBA free agency and just addressing some of it. Hopefully the acoustics sound good in here. As you can tell, I'm not in my normal setup. I'm out of town, right? If you're new to the channel, this is not usually how videos look, but it is free agency. I'm out of town. I need to get some stuff out, right? And I just rolled out of bed. I know it looks pretty great for rolling out of bed, but for my standards, pretty low. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about some of the overreactions I've seen. Uh, teams, players, fans, everyone's overreacting to the first three days of free agency. And we're still waiting on so much to happen. And I'm going to get to that here in a bit. But let's just start with... Um, is it possible for a team to overreact? Because I feel like that's the biggest overreaction I've seen so far. This free agency period, this offseason period has been the Houston Rockets. Um, I, I, I scratch my head. Anytime a notification pops up on my phone, it's the Houston Rockets have done X, Y, and Z. I, I do a little bit of this right here. I scratch my head. I don't. I can't quite say I understand it. Okay, I, I get where they're coming from from the standpoint of, oh my God, we had so many young guys and our team was a fucking laughing stock for the entire season and we have to change things. I get that and I respect that. I'm not so sure just throwing stupid bags and crazy overpays for some of these guys is the direction I would have gone, right? Fred Van Vliet, three years max, second, the third year is a team option apparently. I don't know the guarantees on that or what, but you know that makes it a little bit better. That makes it a little bit of an easier pill to swallow. Okay, uh, but the Dylan Brooks, four years, $80 million. I don't know if I would have done that. I'm not so sure I would have done that. Jock Landell, $8 million. Good player. That's a bit of an overpay for a guy like Jock Landell. They go out and they get Jeff Green. Okay, I like that. Those are the type of moves that I can get behind. But they trade away pretty much every young guy on the roster, not named Shangoon, Jabari Smith, Amin Thompson, or uh, uh, Jalen Green, or Kevin Porter Jr., I guess, right? That's understandable. They're trading away all of these young guys for nothing in return right? I, I just can't say I get the vision. I can't say I understand it. If you're a team that's looking to add vets and you have an absurd amount of cap space, why don't you just do like what the Thunder have done over the past few years and just trade for guys, trade for guys on bigger contracts who teams are kind of looking to get rid of to open up some cap space, right? And maybe get some assets in return. Why are you flipping young guys? Not only that, but in the Ty Ty Washington and Garuba trade, they gave up draft, draft assets. Somebody explained to me that to me like a fucking toddler. I don't understand what's going on there. I really can't say I understand it, right? I get getting the veterans in there. I get, you know, you have a coach in Ime Odoka who's going to want to be competitive immediately. But God, this feels like a big overreaction for what we needed to see from them, right? It feels like, okay, we need vets. Oh my God, Fred Van Vliet, take $45 million. Dylan Brooks, take $20 million. And this kind of leads into a point that I think should be talked about later at a later point, like in depth. And that cap space kind of sucks now. Like you actually don't want to have cap space. You don't want to be in a position where you have to get up to the cap floor because your only real method of doing it now since free agency is gone. Like traditional free agency does not exist anymore in the modern NBA. It's completely out the window, right? It's all trades. It's all trades, okay? So if you're one of these teams that, hey, we're going to have $50, $60 million in cap space, you're going to do what the, what the Rockets are doing right now, which is just throwing an absurd fucking bag at people and overpaying guys to get them on your team so you can get up to the salary cap floor. That's where we're going to be at. So uh, I can't quite say I agree with what they're doing, I see why they're doing it. I would have gone about it a different way. You know, I'm not an NBA GM though. Should I be one? That's that's a conversation for a different day. Okay. Uh, the next big overreaction I've seen. You see that man right there? Look how scary he looks. Dwight Powell. Uh, he resigned for the Dallas, to the Dallas Mavericks. Three years, 12 million, I think it is. And this led to... Uh, what was expected if Dwight Powell were to resign, which is a full-fledged meltdown by people over on Mavs Twitter, the good folks over on uh, Mavs Twitter. Can't quite say I get it at all. I mean, this is a, a really, really solid backup big. And of course, yes, he's been thrusted into the starting spot for the Dallas Mavericks. I've said this a million times. I can't blame him for that. That's not his fault. But he's very solid in what he does, right? Which is set screens, roll, a hustle guy. There's a strong 10 to 15 minute per game type of a role carved out for guys like Dwight Powell. And to get that for $4 million a year, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Some of these overreactions are just absolutely insane. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't like the way Mavs fans talk about Dwight Powell. I think it's incredibly disrespectful. I think it's incredibly unfair too for a guy who has been here for as long as he has, who has done everything that's been asked of him, who has never complained, who his teammates seem to love, who is seems to be a leader in the locker room, right? Uh, to just, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't personally agree with it. I don't like it. Do I want him to be the starting center on the Dallas Mavericks? Fuck no. Of course not. Nobody with, a, nobody with a functioning brain does, okay? But for $4 million a year, yes, I would, I would very much like to have that, right? And then I, I've seen reports that he's, like, the Mavericks want him to, uh, 
I like how I keep pointing to this picture. Like this is like a visual aid. I need you guys to look at. Um, I've seen reports that the Mavericks want him to mentor Derek Lively, and everyone's like, "Ooh, what is what is Dwight Powell going to mentor Derek Lively in?" Uh, I don't know. The guy's been in the league for nine fucking seasons. Like, what is a nine-year vet going to mentor a young guy in? I don't know. Being in the NBA, like, come on, use your brain, guys. Like, let's let's you know, pick yourself up off the ground, and let's let's start using our noggins. Okay, let's start using our heads, because Mavericks fans are having full-fledged meltdown because of this, and they haven't done X, Y, and Z yet, right? I think it's time to be patient. This leads me into my third overreaction, the third biggest overreaction I've seen so far. Why is my team not doing this? Why is my team not doing that? Wake up! He fell asleep at the wheel. What the hell is going on? Guys, okay, I understand a lot of free agents are off the board. Again, this was a very weak free agency class. If I'm a team like the Dallas Mavericks, my full mid-level, I'm looking at the guys who went around that range. I, like The guys who I wanted to get on the Mavericks ended up getting $20 plus million a year. So, I mean, I, I don't really know what could have been expected. Right in retrospect, Brooke Lopez got a huge bag. Dylan Brooks, twenty million dollars. Bruce Brown, over twenty million dollars. You're not competing with that. If you're a mid-level team, you are not competing with that. Okay. And then there's guys like Jalen McDaniels. By the way, have you guys watched Jalen McDaniels? I, I, and I'm not, you know, I, I hate when people use the casual argument, but have you guys watched him play? He's not who you think he is. I think you guys are confusing Jalen McDaniels for Jaden McDaniels. Because the way I've seen people like, I can't believe they fucking let Jalen McDaniels go. I can't believe they let J- they didn't get Jalen McDaniels. I can't believe it. Have you guys watched him play? I'm just curious. That's all I have to ask. But in terms of this NBA offseason, man, we're waiting on two gigantic dominoes to drop. Damian Lillard trade, which can't like just it functionally cannot be a two-team trade. Three, four team trade, right? Teams are going to be involved. Pieces are going to be available. The fallout from it, there's going to be players who previously might not have been available who are now available, right? So teams, I think, are being a little bit patient on that. And James Harden as well is going to get traded. So, like, I think teams are just waiting. There's free agents who are waiting. Things are going to happen, right? And if your team looks the way it does now, a month from now, okay, then we can start to get freaked out. But yes, this might be a bit of a slower process. And when it comes to the Mavericks, am I saying that, oh, they're going to do X, Y, and Z? I know for a fact they are. Of course not. It's a Dallas Mavericks. Like, it's very possible they're done. Dante Exum last night was the big free agent signing. It's very possible that they are done after that, okay? But it's also possible that, you know, they wait to see how this all plays out in the in the Damian Lillard sweepstakes. They get involved in some way or the James Harden sweepstakes. They get involved in some way. I have no idea, okay? But the fact still remains there's two gigantic dominoes that need to drop, and I know it's excruciating. I know it sucks watching other teams do stuff while your team is doing nothing, but take it easy, okay? We're on vacation. You know, look at this. You want some You want some wine? You want some fireball whiskey? If I take a shot of fireball whiskey right now, I'd project I'll vomit everywhere. Guaranteed. Okay. So that's a big overreaction I've seen that I want to push back on. Um, the next one. This one's just kind of dumb, but I really needed to find some to sort, of, to sort of link in this video. I've seen a lot of people say that the Nuggets have gotten a lot of worse. I'm going a, a lot worse. And I'm a, a lot more worse. They got worse. They worsened their chances at winning. Um, and I'm going to piggyback that by saying I've seen people say the Suns got a lot better and they got the depth that they needed. I don't I don't know. I, I think on paper, obviously, yes, the Nuggets got worse, right? Uh, they lose Bruce Brown. They don't get a return from him. That sucks. Uh, they lose Jeff Green. You know, a, a locker room presence, that, that's going to kind of hurt, although I think that they could easily replace Jeff Green's on-court production, right? Um, I don't know. I, I kind of have some faith in their young guys. Like, is Christian Brown ready to step up to the big role that Bruce Brown had? Why not? Maybe... Maybe he is. I can't. I can't say with any confidence that the Nuggets have for sure gotten worse because I don't. I don't really believe that to be true. I need to see it first. So I've seen people say that, and I've seen people say the gap has narrowed greatly after the Suns' free agency. I don't really agree. Like, yeah, the Suns got depth. They did a pretty good job considering where they were at. Um, I don't. I think Drew Eubanks is a step down from Jock Landell. The more I've, the more I've thought about it, I do think he's a bit of a step down from Jock Landell. Josh Okogie and Damian Lee are like nothings to me. Really, no offense to those guys. God bless them, but. They don't move me in the slightest. Kade Bates Diop is nice, but he has his flaws. It's not like he's a perfect player. Utah Watanabe, he's cool, but he has his flaws as well and was out of the Nets playoff rotation entirely in favor of like Dorian Finney-Smith and Royce O'Neal and all of the wings they had. Like Ben Simmons was playing and, and uh, Watanabe wasn't. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, I just, uh, I think that they did a good job considering where they were at, considering the limited assets they had, the limited room they had to work with. But I, like, I can't say that they hit it out of the park. Like, are those guys scaring you? Because KD, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, DeAndre Neven, newsflash, these guys are not going to be healthy. It would be a miracle. A miracle the size of Jesus being born 
if these guys are healthy over the course of an entire season and going into the postseason. So there's going to be extended minutes for some of these dudes. And am I feeling super confident if, you know, one of those guys gets plugged into the mix? No, not really. If I'm the Suns, you know, unless one of them has a crazy breakout. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I, th- I think they did fine, but I'm not ready to like parade them up and down the street. Great job, Matt Ishbia and Isaiah Thomas. You guys did a great job fleshing out this roster. Eh, they did an okay job. Like, they did an okay job, all things considered. Man, uh, this next one's hating too. God, I, I, I said, <laughs> I've been saying my Sunday videos have been full of hate. And this much is true too. I'm just hating a lot today. It's just Sunday, the day of our Lord. I really need to figure it out. I really need to repent. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the final overreaction that I have seen is uh, <laughs> so many overreactions. In fact, I think I'm reacting to my overreactions of this. And that is the DeMontis Sabonis extension, right? Five years, $210 million, whatever it is, $40 plus million dollars a year for Sabonis. When I first read this number, my jaw dropped to the floor. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought, $40 million for Sabonis? But then I picked my jaw back up and was reacting to my overreaction and said, okay, wait, actually, that makes sense, right? He just made an All-NBA team, and that's kind of the going rate for guys like this. I mean, Fred Van Vliet just got over $40 million. But then I thought about it more, and then I thought, $40 million for DeMontis Sabonis? My favorite part about all of this is like, oh, my God, Sabonis left money on the table to help out the Kings. It's like he left like $10 million total, okay? Like, he's still making $40-plus million. He left money on the table. Wow. Yeah. Wow, he's still making $40-plus million a year. Listen, my stance on Sabonis... Um, It hasn't been much of a secret if you have watched any of my content, really. I'm not the biggest fan of his. I think he's great for the regular season. And uh, I think that, you know, it's great what he did for the Kings, how good he was, and how instrumental he was in the Kings finally breaking that postseason drought. What was it, 16 years, 18 years? Uh, Either way, right? (sighs) Playoff time. I don't know if you win with a guy like that. And I I don't love paying those guys $40 million fucking dollars a year. All right, that's just kind of where I'm at. But then I react to that overreaction by saying, okay, well, but you're the Kings, you know? Like, yes, this is a pretty good roster. And if they were to just get a little bit lucky with some injury stuff, and that's just how a lot of teams, a lot of teams who win championships or make finals runs, they get lucky. Like, let's just call it what it is. If they were to get lucky, like, yeah, this team has enough juice, I think, to make a pretty substantial run. But um, for the Kings, like, maybe they're just kind of cool with being a perennial playoff team. And paying a guy like Sabonis $40 million in one year, they just get lucky, right? Maybe that's okay with them. But I just, a center who can't defend, who's not great athletically, and who really struggles to score outside of like five feet around the basket, I get scared of guys like that in the playoffs. And we saw that. We saw that this past postseason. And in Sabonis' defense, he was playing with one hand. Like he had a fractured thumb on his shooting hand, I believe, right? And listen, I fractured my thumb. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a surprise to you guys or not. I'm not, I'm not an NBA athlete, so I can't, I can't relate to Sabonis on that front. But I fractured my thumb before. It fucking sucks. You can't do anything, right? So I can't even imagine playing NBA basketball with that or trying to shoot. So I, I, I guess you know, we, could, we could excuse him on that front. But I just I worry. I worry about paying a guy like that $40 million. I worry about whether or not he can actually help a team really win in the postseason. Because the Kings were better when he was off of the floor. And I just passed the eye test as well as the number test. Okay. Speaking of on-off numbers, I want you guys just to go look. Go to play-by-play stats, pbpstats.com. Go to their on-off numbers. Plug in Dwight Powell and Luka Doncic. Okay. Plug in those two guys and go to Luka Doncic's rookie year to now. Just do it. Okay. Just fucking do it. All right. I promise you. I promise you it's going to shock you. All right. So anyways, that's just, that's why I, that's how I feel about Sabonis. I don't know why Dwight Powell just got thrown into the mix there. That's how I feel, feel about Sabonis. Is it fair? Probably not. Um, I also saw a funny tweet earlier in the week that was like, Sabonis or Bam, who are you picking moving forward? Easily Bam. Like, let's get serious. No offense, Sabonis. But it, it's obviously Bam. Like, if you're trying to win in the postseason, it's always Bam, and it will always be Bam. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I just want to I just want to add one more thing to this before I, before I sign off for the day. Um, Celtics fans. Because whenever you see anything about Kyrie Irving signing with the Mavericks, it's always Celtics fans who are laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Kyrie's not even going to play a fucking three months before he's out of there. Celtics fans, I would bite your tongue. If you're a believer in karma, of which I am, Celtics fans, I would bite your tongue. You guys just traded for KP and are paying him 30 plus million dollars, okay? I would watch what you say. Because hey, as a Mavericks fan, I've experienced it. It's not fun. It's not a fun experience. 
So before you go laughing about Kyrie, I would watch. What, I would. I would be very, very careful. All right, very, very careful with what you say. Anyways, uh, hopefully, hopefully a huge uh, trade happens by the time, but, but between the time I click finish recording and upload this, so I look like a huge dumbass. All right.